everybody. Welcome to my Shalom Zone. My name is Sherry Dawn, and it is my great honor and privilege to get to share this grace encounter with you today. Decree with me, Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the head of all principality and power, and every knee shall bow to him. Amen. I love decreeing that. <laughs> Paul, when he was uh, addressing issues in the church at Corinth, went directly from how to properly receive communion in chapter 11 to the manifestations of the Holy Spirit in chapter 12. Now, I'm persuaded this is not a coincidence. And the scripture says that there are three that bear witness in the earth. The spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. So he's taking them from communion to the manifestations of the spirit. Because the spirit agrees with the blood. He agrees and bears witness to what the blood of Jesus has done for us. He confirms the truths of the gospel with signs following. Now this is so critically important that we get hold of this and develop confidence in this because we live in an age where there are counterfeit signs and wonders being done by people that have familiar spirits and it's to our advantage to know what the covenant in the blood of jesus has provided for us so let me read you first corinthians chapter 12 verses 1 through 11 now, concerning spiritual gifts, gifts is in italics, if we could just say concerning spiritual things. Brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. And that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administration, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self-same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Okay. I want to back up and focus for a little while on verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Manifestation is from the Greek word phanerosis, and it means an exhibition, an expression, manifestation. So the expression of the Spirit, the exhibition of the Spirit, or manifestation of the Spirit. Whichever word speaks most clearly to you. To, an exhibition is simply a display of something that is shown publicly. You, if you're born again and have received Jesus as your Savior, you carry the Holy Spirit in you, but He's not always exhibiting Himself publicly. He's not always manifesting Himself openly. What I want to focus on today is to stress the truth that the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. There are still so many people that think that these wonderful things that the Holy Spirit is capable of doing is limited to your apostles and prophets and teachers and pastors and evangelists, that type of thing. No, <laughs> no. We're baptized by one spirit into one body. There's just a few verses on down there, verse 13 actually, of this same chapter. And the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit. So I want you to take a leap of faith and embrace this truth. The Holy Spirit manifestation is given to every man. Embrace these truths. How about this? Number one, embrace the truth that the Holy Spirit lives in you. 
if if you're born again, you've received Jesus as your Savior, the Holy Spirit lives in you. Now, you may not have been baptized in the Spirit, but He's in there. To be to take a drink of water is one thing, as I've said before. To take a dive in the swimming pool is another. Being baptized in the Spirit is being so completely submerged in Him that it's just wall-to-wall -wall Holy Spirit. But you're born again by the operation of the Spirit. He is in there. He lives in you. And He wants to profit you. He wants to manifest. So number one, embrace the truth. Holy Spirit lives in me. Number two, embrace the truth. He wants to manifest through me. Through yourself, okay? And then number three, that manifestation will profit somebody, okay? Profit is from the Greek word sympharo, and it means to bear together, to advantage, to be good for, to be profitable. We know from the scripture in uh, Acts 10, 38, that Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Whenever Holy Spirit manifests himself, it's going to profit. It's going to do good. It's going to give an advantage. And in this generation in which we live, <laughs> when everything is turned upside down and just going sideways and it's wonky, I don't care which direction, you know, that you approach it. We need the advantage of the Holy Spirit. We need the advantage of the perceptions of the things of the kingdom. So we want to be willing to embrace this. Uh, I want to just ask some questions and just, just simplify because sometimes I get excited about teaching some of the you know deeper things that the Lord has shown me and I forget to just kind of break things down and simplify for people that have not been studying this for years and years and years and years. <laughs> no, I apologize for that. That's... Uh, one of the pitfalls of loving the Word of God and enjoying studying, and I just get caught up in things. And But the Lord is so faithful and so gracious, and He wants us to be able to relate, regardless of what stage our walk is with the Lord. So I want to ask you three questions, and I want to give you scriptures from the answers, or answers from the scriptures. How do I know the Holy Spirit lives in me? See, it's one thing for me to tell you. But you need to be persuaded. How do I know the Holy Spirit lives in me? And the only thing that I'm going to give you to persuade you is the Word of God. Because if you're basing your decisions on feelings, you're going to mess up. But if you base your decisions on the Word of God and let Him be final authority in your life, you'll be able to stand. John, Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. The Scripture says, As many as received Him... To them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Now the scripture also tells us that God is the spirit. So you believe on Jesus, he gives you power to become a son of God, and it's done by, by God, then that means it has to be done by the spirit. John chapter 14, verses 16 through 18, Jesus is speaking. He said, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So Jesus is giving them to understand he's going to send back the Holy Spirit as the comforter, but it is in essence himself coming back to abide with us in our spirit. So when you're born again by the Spirit of God, the book of Galatians says that he sent forth the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, Father, it's a, he's in there. Okay, that manifestation, he's in there. So you are, if you've received Jesus as your Savior, you are born again by the Spirit. He's in there, and he definitely wants to manifest through you. So how can you be sure? How can I be sure he wants to manifest through me? Let's answer that question. Well, I've already showed you out of 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 7 that the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man. God's not excluding anybody. It's, it's not the Father that is keeping back Holy Spirit from manifesting through you as an individual. 
The scripture said he divides to every man severally as he will, but what affects his will? Our desires. What are we asking for? There are so many Christians that are absolutely terrified that the Holy Spirit is going to want to manifest through them. Oh, what if he gives me the gifts of healings? I'm not sure if I speak or lay my hands on somebody that they're going to get healed every time. So, they, you know, I don't want that. But secretly, they do want that. And then there's others. Well, I'd like to have the gift of knowledge, but I'm afraid if I open my mouth and speak and say something, and what if it turns out that I'm wrong? So there, there's all this confusion and fear that the enemy has used to hold people back from operating in the manifestations of the Spirit. Why? Because when the Holy Spirit manifests and it profits people, it undermines everything that the enemy is trying to do. So, yeah, he's going to try to hinder that. Well, God has raised up a generation right now that is not content to have things that way. They're determined to push through and to receive everything that Jesus suffered in order to be able to give us. We're not going to insult him by leaving it lying on the shelf. We're going to receive what he's made available. Also, how can I be sure he wants to manifest through me? Philippians chapter 2 and verse 13 says, God is working in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It is his delight and his pleasure to work loving kindness, righteousness, justice in the earth, he delights in helping the people, doing good. So set your faith in that. Read these verses. Meditate on this. And just let yourself daydream about, wow, God wants to manifest himself through me. He wants to do good things through me that will profit, benefit, be an advantage to everybody around me. How awesome is that? See, that's part of being the salt of the earth and the light of the world, okay? just because Jesus is in you. And he so wants to be able to manifest himself out. So we're getting rid of some religious thinking and some unbelief that has hindered that. And we're making a choice to embrace these truths that he does live in me and he does want to manifest himself for the profit of the people. Number three, how can I be sure? the manifestation will profit or help or benefit. Well, I've been sharing with you simply because he said so. <laughs> he can't lie. But I want you to also take a look at the life of Jesus and just, just think about it. When he manifested, when the Holy Spirit manifested through Jesus to work miracles, did turning the water into wine and multiplying the loaves of the fish, did that profit the people? Yes, it did. When Holy Spirit manifested as gifts of healing, did it profit the people? Yes. I mean, not only getting over pneumonia and, you know, syphilis and, or whatever else like that, but literally replacing maimed, missing, broken parts. Did that profit people? Yes, 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 yes. When he manifest as discerning of the spirits, did it profit the ones that he cast out the devils from? <laughs> oh, yeah. To the extent that the testimony about the one with the legion was that he was sitting at Jesus' feet, clothed and in his right mind. There's so many people that's in their wrong mind. And they, they don't understand that it's because of demonic vexation. Some of them are possessed, but some of them are just vexed to the point and oppressed to the point that they can't string two coherent thoughts together. God wants those people free. And who better than you? He wants to manifest through you, same as he does anybody else, to benefit and profit those people. When he manifests as the word of knowledge, did it profit Nathaniel? Oh yeah, let's look at that. John chapter 1. Start reading at verse 44. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? And Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile. That means there's no deception in him. And Nathanael saith unto him, 
Whence knowest thou me? Or how do you know me? How do you know that about me? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. And Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. So see, Jesus had a word of knowledge. Before he ever met Nathanael, by that word of knowledge, and it, it manifested, I guess, as a vision, inner vision, but he saw him under the fig tree. He knew what was going to happen before it happened. Did it profit Nathaniel? Yeah, he decided right there, oh, yeah, this is the Son of God. So it profited him. And then Jesus goes ahead and starts operating in the gift of prophecy. He saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter you shall see heaven and open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Well, I'm persuaded that Nathaniel may have been to have stayed awake long enough in the Garden of Gethsemane to see that big old angel come and minister strength to Jesus, as it is written in the Gospels. Jesus said he would see it, and he did. The reason I'm sharing all of this is because Revelations chapter 2 and verse 15, Jesus was speaking to the church at Pergamos, and he said that they held the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing he hated a strong language. Jesus hated this doctrine. And the thing about the Nicolaitans is they placed the clergy up above the congregation. Uh, I'm not talking about standing up on a podium so everybody can see you. I'm talking about elevating the clergy in people's thinking, the ministers, elevating them so that they are held in too high of an esteem that they are venerated and revered and made to appear as if they're the only ones that can carry the anointing they're the only ones that can carry the giftings they're the only ones that can do anything for the kingdom of God Jesus said he hates that doctrine that's a lie because the same Holy Spirit baptized all of us into the same body. And that same Holy Spirit has, through Paul the Apostle, inspired him to write that the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Now, yes, we are supposed to honor people that are in positions of leadership, people that God has given giftings and anointings to help establish the church and prepare them for the work of the ministry. We're, we are still being prepared for this work of this end-time harvest, and it takes that five-fold ministry of the apostle, prophet, preacher, teacher, and evangelist, or pastor, teacher, and evangelist. It takes all of that. But the whole purpose of those ministry positions is to prepare the body for this end time harvest, we've got work to do. But at the same time, the same Holy Spirit is in every one of us and the same Holy Spirit wants to manifest through every one of us to profit every one of us and to help sweep this harvest into the kingdom. So we want to do away. If, if the doctrine of the Nicolaitans has affected our thinking and we have believed that lie that God can't use me like he uses Pastor Jama Jama. Uh-uh. Do away with that. God wants to use you. He wants the Holy Spirit to be able to manifest through you. So we're not going to sit people on a pedestal and people who are holding one of the five-fold ministry positions. We are not going to expect to be served and want people to hold us in high honor and veneration. No, that's the, the Pharisees did that. Uh-uh. We don't need all that. What we need is to humble ourselves and to serve one another, to do things in the love of God, and let everything be about Jesus. I'm sharing these things because I know this outpouring that, of the Holy Spirit that we're stepping into, this latter and former reign of the Spirit, it's affecting everybody in the body of Christ, and it's going to affect everything around us. It's going to continue to increase. We're just, we're just beginning to get the little misty dribbles now. <laughs> it's fixing to be a flood. I want you ready for that. But God's not going to force anything on you. So I'm trying to present these things to you to encourage you to start 
making a decision and to begin to pray and ask the Lord, Lord, use me. Holy Spirit, manifest through me. It doesn't have, it's not going to be hard. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. When you've got a compassionate heart, there are things that are going to flow through you that will be, you've probably already been operating in some of the, of the ministry gifts and just didn't realize that that's what it was. But the more you open yourself up to that, the more that you're willing to embrace the graces that minister this by the Holy Spirit and, and cause this to be able to flow out of you to touch somebody else's life, the more you're willing to participate in that and the more you're willing to pray and ask for that, the more he's willing to give it. But it needs to be done in the context of an understanding of what the blood of Jesus purchased for you at the cross. Because when you understand it's through his grace we're all forgiven, it's because of his grace and his broken body, healing has, is available, then we don't pick and choose we just make it available. We put it out there. Freely we have received, we freely give. So there's a lot of religious thinking that has got to be uprooted and overturned. And it can only happen as you get revelation of the blood of Jesus and what it's done. And then as we become willing for the Holy Spirit to manifest himself, to exhibit himself through us. And some of the most powerful, powerful things that the Lord will do in your life or the life of any other individual will come about simply because somebody said the right thing at the right time and it turned the lights on in your mind and you were able to open up and receive grace truths that brought about freedom. It is written in Psalm 110 that God's people would be willing in the day of His power. I want to encourage you to start praying into that willingness because it's for the profit of many we're fighting for the souls of men. We're fighting for this generation that the enemy thinks he has so deceived that there's no rescuing them. That's a lie. I've shared with you many times and will continue to speak it out until the Lord calls me home or until he returns, whichever comes first. Grace has the prior claim. The lamb was slain before the foundation of the world in God's dimension. And it is written that he gave us grace, not according, he saved us and called us, not according to our works, but according to his purpose and the grace he gave us in Christ before the world began. When you understand that, when you understand that we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, not by our receiving the gift, but by the act of his death, then it's now available for us to receive it as a gift. But we were reconciled unto God by the death of his son. God was in Christ, reconciling the world, not imputing their trespasses unto them. And the very heart of the new covenant is, is that God is merciful to our unrighteousness and our sins and iniquities. He remembers no more. You cooperate with the blood of Jesus in that. You speak out and you receive by faith the manifestations that the blood has purchased. Just speaking that out and declaring that. You're turning Holy Spirit loose to manifest himself. And oh, that makes him so happy. Mm. It is for the profit of many that we're going to do these things. So I'm just trying to encourage you. Pray into that. Be willing to embrace that. Let me bless you. The Lord bless you and inspire you with holy zeal and willingness. The Lord strengthen you and restore your hope for the future. The Lord protect you and grant you fresh revelation of the power in his blood that you may prevail over every attack of the enemy. Blessed are you, receivers of grace and of the gift of righteousness. You are a city set on a hill, and now is the time for you to shine. May you live to be 120. Amen. Let us pray. Father, I'm so thankful that you are a spirit. <laughs> and I thank you for the fluidity of the spirit that you chose to baptize us into one body by one spirit. And in doing so, the scriptures tells us that if we are Christ, then we are one spirit with the Lord. And that means one breath. And so every time we breathe in and breathe out, we're breathing with you. 
Thank you that you never leave us, never forsake us. Thank you that you're continually tugging at our hearts, trying to draw us higher and help us to perceive the things that you've given us through the blood of your Son. Trying to help us understand that if we'll just take that first little step in faith, you will do the work. So Father, I pray for your people today, everybody that hears this message. As I send it out on the airwaves, Lord, in the uh, just the natural sound waves and then also the airwaves of the Spirit. Quicken the hearts of the people with that holy desire to flow in the things of the kingdom. Create in us that willingness to submit ourselves to you and to allow Holy Spirit to manifest himself through us, to exhibit himself through us for the profit of the people. Do away with the religious thinking that has been a, an invisible restraint in our minds when we thought that only pastors and teachers and preachers and evangelists and apostles and prophets could carry these anointings and do these things. No, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Help us to embrace that. And through the blood of Jesus, I receive it done. I thank you, Father, for the powerful thing you're doing in this earth. All glory and dominion be unto you. Amen. All right, dear friend, I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day, and I will talk to you later.